One unexpected encounter in the kitchen changed everything. I didn't recognize him at first, standing there by the counter like he belonged, like it was the most normal thing in the world. But it wasn't. It was 6 a.m., and I didn't know who this man was or why he was in my space, so calmly as if we had known each other for years. Something felt wrong, unfamiliar, the air charged with an unsettling energy that shouldn't have been there. You're still here? I asked, my voice coming out less composed than I wanted. The question hung in the air, loaded with confusion. He didn't answer right away, staring down at the floor for a moment too long. When he finally lifted his gaze, our eyes met, and there was something in the way he looked at me, something that made my pulse quicken. Couldn't sleep, he said, his tone steady but distant, like there was more to this encounter than his simple words revealed. Thought I'd get a head start on the day. The kitchen light cast a soft glow over his features, and for a moment, it felt like everything between us was hanging in the balance. There was an unspoken tension that neither of us wanted to address, but it was there, heavy, undeniable. This wasn't like the usual mornings, and we both knew it. I didn't reply immediately, my mind scrambling to make sense of why I felt so uneasy. He'd been staying with us for a few weeks, a family friend, helping out around the house while things were hectic. We'd exchanged polite conversations, but that was it. Nothing about this moment should have felt out of place, yet it did. Yeah, I get that, I mumbled, stepping toward the coffee maker, desperate to find something to do with my hands. Mornings like this are rare for me. Usually, the house is dead quiet. He chuckled softly, the sound low and intimate, as if he were in on some private joke. It is quiet, too quiet. I poured the coffee, my back to him, feeling the weight of his gaze like a heavy blanket draped over my shoulders. I told myself to relax, that this was just an ordinary morning. But the longer I stood there, the more the silence between us felt thick with something I couldn't name. Something unfamiliar. When I turned around, he was closer. Not too close, but enough to notice. His movements were deliberate, slow, as though he was taking his time. You usually get up this early? he asked, his eyes not leaving mine as he leaned casually against the counter, as though he hadn't just closed half the distance between us. I nodded, trying to act nonchalant. Yeah, I like to start the day early. Get things done before everyone else is up. Smart, he said, still watching me. His tone was easy, but there was a tension beneath it, something I couldn't quite put my finger on. It made my stomach twist in knots, and I found myself holding my breath, waiting for something. Though I didn't know what. I turned my attention to my coffee, stirring it more than necessary. The kitchen felt too small all of a sudden, too intimate. I wasn't sure why I was so on edge, but I couldn't shake the feeling that this wasn't just another conversation. So, I started, trying to shift the conversation to safer ground. Any plans for today? He shrugged, his eyes still on me, making it impossible to relax. Not really. I figured I'd see where the day takes me. Maybe hang out around here. He said it casually, but there was something in the way he looked at me that made my heart race. His gaze wasn't casual. It was focused, intent, like he was waiting for something. Something from me. I forced a smile, trying to shake off the feeling. Yeah, well, the day's still young. He nodded, his eyes never leaving mine. The silence stretched between us again but this time it felt heavier, like a storm gathering on the horizon. I tried to think of something else to say, something to break the tension, but the words wouldn't come. You know, he said suddenly, his voice softer now, almost intimate. I've been meaning to talk to you. My heart skipped a beat, and I set down my coffee mug a little too hard, the sound of it clattering against the counter echoing in the quiet kitchen. Oh, I asked trying to sound casual, though I could feel my pulse quickening. He didn't answer right away. Instead, he took a step closer, his eyes locked on mine, and for the first time I realized just how tall he was. 
how close he was. Yeah, he said, his voice low, almost a whisper now. I feel like we haven't really had a chance to talk. Not properly. The way he said it made my throat tighten. There was something about his tone, the way he was looking at me, that sent a shiver down my spine. This wasn't just small talk. I could feel it in the air between us, like a charge waiting to spark. I swallowed hard, trying to find my voice. What do you mean? He smiled, but it wasn't the easy, friendly smile I'd seen before. This one was different. It was slower, more deliberate, like he knew something I didn't. I don't know, he said, his eyes never leaving mine. I just feel like there's more to say. My heart pounded in my chest, and I suddenly felt trapped, like the walls of the kitchen were closing in around us. I wanted to step back, to put some distance between us, but my feet wouldn't move. It was like I was frozen in place, caught in his gaze, unable to break free. Maybe later, I said, my voice coming out weaker than I intended. I've got a lot to do today. He didn't move, didn't step back. Yeah, later, he said softly his voice smooth as silk. But we'll talk, right? I nodded, not trusting myself to speak, and turned away, grabbing my coffee and heading for the door. I could feel his eyes on me the entire time, like a weight pressing down on my shoulders, making it hard to breathe. As I left the kitchen, my heart still racing, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had shifted between us, something I didn't fully understand. And the worst part was... I wasn't sure if I wanted to understand it. It was the little things that I started to notice first. His casual glances that seemed to linger just a bit too long, the way he'd brush past me in the hallway even when there was plenty of space. At first, I told myself I was imagining it, that I was reading too much into nothing. But it was hard to ignore the way my stomach would tighten every time he was near, or how my pulse would race with a mix of nervousness and something else something I didn't want to name. Days passed, and the house continued to hum with a quiet tension. It was subtle, almost invisible, like a current just beneath the surface, but I felt it every time he was in the room. He didn't say anything outright, nothing that could be considered inappropriate, but the way he looked at me, the way he seemed to always be near, it made everything feel... off. And then, one evening, things shifted. It had been a long day, the kind that left me feeling drained and eager for a moment of peace. I was sitting on the couch, mindlessly flipping through channels, when I heard the floorboards creak behind me. I didn't have to turn around to know it was him. His presence was unmistakable now, like a shadow I couldn't shake. You mind if I sit? His voice was casual, but there was a weight to it that made me pause. I glanced up, offering a tight smile. Sure. I was just watching some random stuff, nothing exciting. He sat down on the other end of the couch, the space between us wide, but not wide enough to ease the knot in my stomach. I kept my eyes on the screen, but I could feel his gaze on me, the air between us thick with something unspoken. I could hear the faint sound of his breathing, steady and calm, while mine was shallow, my chest tightening with every second that passed. So... He began, his voice soft but deliberate. We haven't really talked since the other morning. I didn't know what to say. My heart pounded in my chest as I replayed that moment in the kitchen over and over in my mind. I'd been trying to avoid it, to brush it off as nothing, but I couldn't shake the feeling that it was more. That we were more. Yeah, I muttered, trying to keep my voice steady. I've been busy. He didn't reply right away, and the silence that followed felt too heavy, like it was pressing down on me, making it harder to breathe. Finally, he spoke again, his voice quieter this time. You've been avoiding me. I froze, my fingers gripping the edge of the couch as I forced myself to keep my gaze on the TV. No, I haven't, I lied, my voice barely above a whisper. He shifted slightly, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw him move a little closer. It's okay, he said softly. I get it. But 
we need to talk. There it was again. That tension, that pull between us that I couldn't explain but couldn't ignore either. My pulse quickened, and I fought the urge to get up, to leave the room before things spiraled out of control. But instead, I stayed, rooted to the spot, waiting for him to say more. I know you felt it too, he continued, his voice barely more than a murmur now. That morning, in the kitchen, I swallowed hard, my throat dry. I didn't want to have this conversation. I didn't want to admit that he was right, that something had shifted between us, something that I couldn't push away no matter how hard I tried. Nothing happened, I said, my voice trembling. We were just talking. That's not true, and you know it. His voice was calm, steady, but there was a firmness to it that made my skin prickle with unease. There's something between us. There has been for a while. I didn't know how to respond. My mind was racing, my heart pounding in my chest as I tried to process what he was saying. This wasn't supposed to happen. He was just a family friend, someone who was supposed to be here to help, not... not this. I don't... I don't know what you're talking about, I whispered, though the words felt hollow even as I said them. He moved closer, his knee brushing against mine, and I flinched at the contact, though I didn't move away. Yes, you do, he said softly, his voice low and insistent. We don't have to pretend anymore. I felt trapped, like the walls were closing in on me, the air too thick to breathe. My head was spinning, my pulse thundering in my ears as I fought to make sense of the situation. Part of me wanted to get up, to leave to run as far away from this as I could. But another part of me, a part I didn't want to acknowledge, was telling me to stay. I don't, I started, my voice shaky, but he cut me off before I could finish. You're not a kid anymore, he said, his voice softer now, almost soothing. You're grown. You understand what this is. My breath caught in my throat, and I couldn't find the words to respond. He was too close now, his presence overwhelming, suffocating. I wanted to push him away, to tell him to stop, but my body wouldn't listen. My heart was pounding so hard I thought it might burst, and I could feel the tension between us building, thickening like a storm about to break. You felt it too, he continued, his hand resting on the couch, just inches from mine. Haven't you? I shook my head, my mind screaming at me to get out, to leave, but my body stayed still. This isn't... this isn't right, I whispered, my voice trembling. His hand moved, brushing lightly against mine, and I flinched at the touch, though I didn't pull away. Maybe not, he said softly. But it's real, and we can't keep pretending like it's not. I looked up at him then meeting his gaze for the first time since this conversation had started. His eyes were dark, intense, and there was something in them that made my heart skip a beat. I didn't know what to say, how to respond. Everything about this was wrong, but at the same time, it was impossible to deny the pull between us, the electricity that seemed to crackle in the air whenever he was near. We shouldn't be talking about this, I whispered, my voice barely audible. This can't happen. His gaze didn't waver. It already has. I felt my stomach churn, a wave of fear and confusion crashing over me. I wanted to say something, anything, to make this stop, to make everything go back to normal. But I couldn't. The words were stuck in my throat, and all I could do was sit there, frozen, as he inched closer his hand brushing against mine again. We're both adults, he said softly, his voice low and smooth. We don't have to follow anyone else's rules. I shook my head, my heart pounding so hard I thought I might pass out. This is wrong, I whispered, though I wasn't sure if I was saying it to him or to myself. He didn't move away. Why, he asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Who's to say what's right or wrong? I swallowed hard, my pulse racing as I tried to make sense of what was happening. I wanted to get up, to leave, but I couldn't. I was trapped, 
not just by him but by my own confusion, my own desire to understand what this all meant. I don't know, I whispered, my voice trembling. I just know this isn't supposed to happen. He was silent for a moment, his eyes locked on mine, and I could feel the weight of his gaze pressing down on me, making it harder to think, harder to breathe. Maybe it's not, he said finally, his voice low and calm. But that doesn't mean it won't. I didn't know how to respond. My mind was spinning, my heart racing, and all I wanted was for this moment to end. But at the same time, there was a part of me, a part I didn't want to admit, that didn't want it to stop. He reached out then, his hand brushing against mine, and I didn't pull away. My body was frozen, paralyzed by the tension between us, by the intensity of the moment. I could feel the warmth of his skin against mine, the electricity crackling in the air between us, and for a moment, I thought I might explode from the pressure of it all. We don't have to do anything, he said softly, his voice soothing now. We can just talk. We can figure this out. Together. I swallowed hard, my throat tight and knotted. I didn't know what else to do. I'd stayed in my room longer than usual, hoping the silence would help calm the storm that had been building inside me. But it didn't. It only made the tension worse, made my thoughts louder, harder to ignore. I could hear faint sounds from downstairs. The hum of the refrigerator, the occasional creak of the floorboards. But mostly, it was quiet. The kind of quiet that makes you feel like something's about to happen. And I knew, deep down, that it was. It had been coming for days now, maybe even longer, and tonight, tonight felt different. A soft knock on my door broke the stillness, startling me out of my thoughts. My heart raced, and for a moment I considered not answering, pretending I hadn't heard. But the knock came again, a little more insistent this time. Yeah? My voice was quiet, almost too quiet, as if I wasn't sure if I really wanted to invite him in. The door opened slowly, and there he was, standing in the dim light of the hallway. He didn't say anything at first, just looked at me with that same unreadable expression I'd seen in his eyes the last few times we'd been alone. There was something about the way he was standing there, framed by the door, that made my pulse quicken. I couldn't sleep, he said finally, his voice low. Can I come in? I nodded the word yeah slipping out before I could stop it. He stepped inside, closing the door quietly behind him. The room suddenly felt smaller, like the air had thickened in the space between us. He didn't sit down right away, just stood there for a moment, watching me, and I could feel the weight of his gaze like a physical thing. Is everything okay? I asked, though I wasn't sure if I really wanted to know the answer. He didn't respond right away, just moved a little closer, his presence filling the room in a way that made it hard to breathe. I've been thinking about what you said, he began, his voice softer now, but still carrying that quiet intensity. About how this shouldn't happen. My stomach twisted into a knot and I could feel my pulse racing, my heart thudding in my chest as I tried to make sense of the moment. This wasn't the first time we'd had this conversation, but something about the way he was looking at me now felt different, more deliberate. And, I asked, though my voice came out weaker than I'd intended. He took another step closer, his gaze never leaving mine. And I think you're wrong, he said simply, as if it were the most obvious thing in the world. I blinked, unsure of how to respond. Wrong? About what? That this was dangerous? That we were crossing a line that couldn't be uncrossed? We've been dancing around this for weeks, he continued, his voice still calm. But there was something beneath it, something that made my stomach flip. And you feel it too, don't you? I opened my mouth to respond, but the words wouldn't come. My mind was spinning, my thoughts tangled in a mess of confusion and fear. And something else. Something... I wasn't ready to admit. He took another step forward, and suddenly, he was close enough that I could feel the warmth radiating from him. I should have stepped back, 
should have put more space between us, but I didn't, I couldn't. My body was frozen in place, my breath catching in my throat as he moved even closer. You don't have to fight it, he whispered, his voice barely more than a murmur now. Just relax, accept what is happening, and just live in the moment. I swallowed hard, my heart pounding so loudly I was sure he could hear it. I wanted to say something, to push him away. But the truth was, I didn't want to. Not really. I had been trying to convince myself for days that this was wrong, that we couldn't go down this path. But now, standing here with him so close, it was impossible to deny the pull between us. We just can't, I started, my voice barely audible. Why not, he asked, his eyes searching mine. Who's going to stop us? I couldn't answer. The question hung in the air between us, heavy with the weight of everything we weren't saying. There was no one to stop us, no one to tell us what was right or wrong. It was just us here, just this moment. And the truth was, I didn't want it to end. Without another word, he closed the last bit of distance between us. And then, before I could stop him, before I could stop myself, he kissed me. It wasn't sudden or rushed. It was slow, deliberate, like he had been waiting for this moment for a long time. His lips were soft against mine, and I felt a jolt of something deep inside me, something that made it impossible to pull away. I didn't even want to. The kiss deepened, and everything else seemed to disappear. The room, the silence, the fear. It all faded into the background, leaving only him, only us. The world outside this moment didn't exist anymore. It was just the two of us caught in something we couldn't control, something we didn't want to control. I could feel the tension that had been building for so long finally snap, releasing all the things we had been trying so hard to hold back. I didn't know how long it lasted. Time seemed to lose all meaning, the minutes stretching out as we moved together, caught in the whirlwind of the moment. It was like nothing else mattered anymore, like the rules we had been so afraid to break didn't exist. When it was finally over, the room felt different. The air was heavier, the silence louder, but it wasn't the same kind of silence that had filled the house before. This was a different kind of quiet, the kind that came after something irrevocable had happened, something that would change everything. I pulled away, breathless, my mind still spinning with everything that had just happened. I couldn't bring myself to look at him, couldn't face the reality of what we had done what it meant. But when I finally did look up, his eyes were on me, and I could see it in his expression. The same mixture of fear and something else that I was feeling. This wasn't the end. It was just the beginning of something we couldn't take back. We'll figure it out, he said softly, his voice barely more than a whisper. I nodded, though I wasn't sure if I believed him. But in that moment, I didn't have the energy to argue, didn't have the strength to question what came next. All I knew was that something had changed between us, something we couldn't undo. The silence stretched between us again. It was the kind of silence that spoke volumes, that said more than words ever could. We had crossed a line, and now we would have to face whatever came next. The days that followed were a blur. I tried to go about things like nothing had changed, like I could slip back into the routine of life without letting what had happened between us consume every thought. I'd wake up in the morning with a knot in my stomach, unsure of how the day would unfold. I'd pass by him in the hallway, catching a brief glance before looking away, trying to pretend that we could still exist in the same space without the weight of our secret pressing down on us. But it was always there like a shadow lurking in the corner of my mind impossible to ignore, and he wasn't making it any easier. Every time we were alone, even for just a moment, I could feel his presence lingering too long, his gaze heavy with that same intensity I'd felt before. It was as if the air between us was always charged with something we weren't saying, something we had agreed to keep hidden but couldn't quite escape. I tried to stay out of the house as much as possible, finding excuses to be anywhere but home. 
It worked for a while. The long walks, the errands that suddenly seemed urgent, the occasional night spent crashing at a friend's place. But I knew I couldn't keep it up forever. Eventually, I'd have to face him again. It was a late afternoon when it finally happened. The sun was low in the sky, casting long shadows across the living room as I sat on the couch, mindlessly flipping through a book I wasn't really reading. I had the house to myself, or so I thought. I'd let myself relax for the first time in days, the tension in my shoulders easing as I settled into the quiet, letting the stillness of the house wash over me. But then I heard the sound of footsteps coming down the hall. My heart jumped into my throat as I looked up, and there he was, standing in the doorway, his expression unreadable. I felt my pulse quicken, my stomach twisting into knots as I tried to keep my voice steady. I didn't know you were home, I said, my words coming out a little too quickly. He didn't answer right away, just stood there, his eyes locked on mine. Yeah, he said finally, his voice low. I got back a little while ago. I could feel the tension between us, thick and heavy, like the air had been sucked out of the room. I glanced back down at the book in my lap, pretending to read, but the words blurred together, meaningless. My heart was pounding, and I could feel that familiar sense of unease creeping up on me again. I was hoping we could talk, he said after a moment, stepping further into the room. I froze my fingers tightening around the edges of the book. I didn't want to have this conversation. I wasn't ready, but I knew I couldn't avoid it forever. About what? I asked, though I already knew the answer. You know what? He replied, his voice calm. But there was an edge to it that made my stomach twist even tighter. We can't keep showing like nothing happened. I swallowed hard, my throat dry. I'm not faking anything. You are he said softly, moving closer. You've been avoiding me. You've barely said a word to me since that night. I didn't know how to respond. My mind was racing, my thoughts jumbled as I tried to find a way out of this conversation. But there wasn't one. He was right. I had been avoiding him, pretending that I could somehow make everything go back to the way it was before. But deep down, I knew that wasn't possible. I just... I don't know what to say, I admitted, my voice barely above a whisper. He sat down on the couch beside me, not too close, but close enough that I could feel the weight of his presence. You don't have to say anything, he said quietly. But we can't ignore this forever, you know that. I nodded, though I wasn't sure if I agreed. I didn't want to ignore it. I wanted to understand it, to make sense of what had happened between us but every time I tried to think about it, to put it into words, my mind went blank, like there were no answers, just more questions. What do you want? I asked finally, my voice trembling. He didn't hesitate. I just want us to stop showing like it didn't mean anything and nothing happened. His expression was serious, but there was something else there too. Something softer, more vulnerable than I'd ever seen in him before. He reached out, his hand hovering for a moment, as if he wasn't sure whether to close the gap between us. But then he pulled back, letting his hand fall into his lap. I'm not asking for anything right now, he said quietly. Just don't shut me out. I nodded slowly, though I wasn't sure if I really meant it. My mind was still spinning, my thoughts a tangled mess of confusion and fear. But there was also something else there, something I hadn't expected, a glimmer of hope, a small part of me that wanted to believe that maybe, just maybe, we could figure this out. For a long time, neither of us said anything. We just sat there, the silence stretching out between us, not uncomfortable, but not exactly easy either. It was the kind of silence that carried weight, the kind that said more than words ever could. Finally, I stood up, my legs feeling shaky beneath me. I need some air, I said, though I wasn't sure if that was the real reason I was leaving the room. He nodded, understanding in his eyes, but he didn't try to stop me. Take your time, he said softly. I walked outside, 
the cool evening air hitting me like a wave of relief. I took a deep breath, trying to clear my head, but the truth was I didn't know what to think anymore. Everything that had happened, everything we had said, it was all swirling around in my mind, impossible to pin down. But as I stood there, staring up at the darkening sky, I realized something. I didn't have to figure it all out right now. I didn't need to have everything figured out right away. Maybe the answers would come in time, or maybe they never would. But what mattered now was that I wasn't facing it alone. Whatever came next, we would handle it together, and for the first time in a long while, the uncertainty didn't feel so overwhelming.